This is the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health in partnership with MedCost. Good day, everyone. Welcome back to the latest episode of the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health. Hope everyone out there is staying safe and well listening to this episode. We are going to be discussing, you might be guessing uh, correctly, COVID vaccines in this podcast episode. There's a lot of questions, a lot of information out there on social media, a lot of information that's being updated and changed quickly coming through various media outlets and from government entities. Um, So we'll be talking about the COVID vaccine, but we're gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive and talk a little bit about vaccines and the history and maybe concerns uh, about vaccines overall and how it relates to this COVID-19 vaccine, specifically within the African-American and Latinx community. And I have a really cool, awesome guest to help us navigate through this conversation. Before we get to our guest, uh, since this podcast is COVID related, I do wanna take the opportunity just to remind everyone listening that you can always visit our website, wakehealth.edu slash COVID for the latest COVID information that is coming through the Wake Forest Baptist Health System. And that is about the disease itself, um, the virus, and also uh, the latest vaccine information that we have to distribute through Wake Forest Baptist. Please feel free to check back frequently because it frequently gets updated. Without further ado, I wanna introduce Dr. Allison Matthews. She is the Associate Director at our Maya Angelou Center for Health Equity. So welcome, Dr. Matthews, how are you? Hi, I'm good, thank you for having me. Absolutely, absolutely. So um, I know you, like many other healthcare industry workers, have been very busy lately, and um, you have a lot on your plate, and a lot of it surrounds COVID uh, here as of recent times. So I'm going to ask you about that in a minute, but before I do, just take a second and tell us a little bit about yourself and, you know, how you uh, came into the position uh, at the Mount Angeles Center and, and a little bit about your background. Sure. So... I have a PhD in sociology, and so my research interest is in how uh, we as community members and and particularly marginalized populations navigate experiences with stigma and discrimination and also trying to address um, mistrust um, Mm -hmm. between researchers and the community. So I've done a lot of work previously before COVID around trust building around uh, HIV related clinical trials. Uh, If you can imagine, there's a lot of stigma around HIV. And so a lot of that work was community building, trust building, um, creating mechanisms for community members to have a voice in how clinical trials are done at the hospital. And so in my role at the Maya Angelou Center, I am doing that work. And then now, of course, because of COVID, it's now been focused mostly on how do we facilitate conversations with community members about uh, building trust, addressing um, misinformation, addressing Mm -hmm. myths, and creating mechanisms for community members to have a voice in how uh, the research as well as the vaccine kind of rollout is being done at, at Wake Forest Baptist. Well, that sounds like important work. And that that aligns pretty closely, obviously, with your job description as part of the overall mission of the Maya Angelou Center. If people aren't necessarily familiar with the Maya Angelou Center for Health Equity, you know, maybe just take a, a few seconds and, and um, tell them tell them what um, the Maya Angelou Center does and what it focuses on day in and out, day in and day out with with Dr. Goldie Bird um, sure. lead, leading that ship. So uh, Dr. Goldie Bird is the director, the center director of the Maya Angelou Center. I'm actually the associate director of a program called Integrating Special Populations, Mm -hmm. which which as I mentioned before, it focuses on kind of that recruitment, retention and community Mm -hmm. building around research. And then Dr. Allison Caban-Holt is the associate director of the Maya Angelou Center for Health Equity. So the the work that we do is um, trying to con conduct research on how we better improve um, health outcomes and address health disparities 
for uh, underrepresented groups, and that includes older adults, uh, age 65 and older, young people age 17 and under, and racial ethnic minorities like African American, Latinx, and Native American, American Indian populations. Okay. And so a lot of the work is uh, COVID-19, HIV, Alzheimer's disease, mm -hmm. um, and, and trying to raise awareness about those things. We do a lot of health education, and we also do a lot of outreach. So we actually hired um, community health workers who are out in the community educating people about health topics and connecting them to wraparound services as well. Okay, that's really, that's really cool. That's really important work. Um, you know, I would say maybe more important now than ever, just um, because of all the rapid developments within within healthcare lately, the, the past 12 months surrounding COVID and, and the vaccine coming to market and you know, I would say also very important just because of how quickly information can spread these days, um, you know, information or misinformation. Um, so it's it's really good to have you all out there and, and doing the research and, and coming back with the data and the science um, to help uh, discuss and, and analyze and talk through, um, you know, whatever specific topic you all might be studying at the time or, or talking about. Um, but yeah, obviously, a lot of us have been talking about COVID lately, and more recently, the COVID vaccine. So um, before we, we dive into some more specifics about um, the, the vaccine and, and concerns, I want you to, to take a minute and talk to us a little bit about um, the work you've been doing uh, as part of the um, Community Research Partnership and how that ties into your mission of, of being inclusive and, and bringing people to the table, um, both with, with you know, COVID information and, and the antibody study, but now more recently the vaccine uh, study and, and the vaccine coming to market. Um, I think that'd be really interesting for people to, to hear. So if you wanna just take a minute and talk about that, I think that'd be great. Sure, so the COVID-19 Community Research Partnership is, a research study that started at Wake Forest and is led by Wake Forest Baptist, mm -hmm. but now has actually expanded to um, sites across the Southeastern United States, including in DC, um, Mississippi, New Orleans, and um, all over North Carolina. And the idea is that you track your symptoms every day for COVID-19 and then uh, people would also receive home test kits to test for antibodies for COVID-19. And that helps us better understand how it's affecting our bodies and spreading in the community. Mm. And so what's interesting is that, you know, because it's called the COVID Community Research Partnership, we wanted to make sure that we had actual partnerships with community and we established mm -hmm. the COVID-19 Community Leadership Council. Mm -hmm. So that leadership council, uh, you know, has representatives from both from staff from Wake Forest Baptist, including yourself, Justin, <laughs> um, with uh, community leaders such as the representatives from the Hispanic League and mm -hmm. Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and Hustle Winston-Salem and Forsyth County Health Department. Mm -hmm. And so we meet um, on a consistent basis to talk about the, the concerns and needs of community members, what they're hearing on the ground, um, and then try to organize events as well as educational content that we can post on social media and pass out in the community to educate people about COVID-19. And so now that the vaccine trials have started and, mm -hmm. and vaccine rollout has, has begun, mm -hmm. uh, that leadership council has been uh, really a, a cornerstone for Wake Forest Baptist and being able to get some insight and how we want to uh, better address the concerns that people in the community have around, or, and the questions people have around vaccines. So the role that we at My Angelo Center has been, you know, making sure that we have that council as a way to get insight, but then also trying to host town hall discussions, put content out on social media, training community health workers so that they can be knowledgeable about the vaccines as well as partnering with entities like Hispanic League and Forsyth County Health Department to host events to get information out in the community. 
Gotcha. Yeah, that's that's really helpful information. Um, and, you know, I think it speaks to the collaborative efforts and, and kind of the community building happening um, around this part of, of Winston, Salem, Forsyth County, the triad, and uh, especially during this pandemic for for different entities to come together and rally together. I think that's I think that's been crucial. Moving uh, a little bit further down the chain into the actual COVID-19 vaccine. And I'm sure you all probably have to talk about this and present this as you talk to your constituents about um, clinical trials and, and vaccine trials, just generically, not necessarily COVID-19. But when you're talking to someone about what that process is on just a very basic foundational level, you know, what, what do you tell them about, you know, it's not just the, the scientists that can raise their hand the quickest if they just start producing mass vaccines. There's actually a pretty rigorous process that they have to go through, correct? Yes, and it, so the first part of that conversation is acknowledging that there are valid reasons why people have hesitation about mm -hmm. vaccines um, or about clinical trials and, mm -hmm. and research in general. And so acknowledging that there has been kind of a sordid past, um, scientific abuses, scientific exploitation, particularly in African-American and Latinx communities, I think is important, especially acknowledging the role that Wake Forest Baptist has had in the eugenics movement and you know, and but also, you know, once we acknowledge that, I think it's important for us to, you know, also articulate that there are so many measures that have been put in place to uh, keep those things from happening again and to protect participants in particular. And so we have the Institutional Review Board that reviews all study protocol. Nothing can happen without their approval, and that has representation from community members who are able to review the clinical trial protocols um, and make sure that they are safe and that there's no like undue risk for participants. Okay. And then the, the next set of measures, um, you know, is to have those community leadership councils who also are giving insight on how the studies are rolled out and how they're impacting the communities, how we're educating people about the vaccines. And, and, and then the other part of it that I try to, that we try to have conversation about, and I think it's important to remember is that this technology is not new. Uh, the, the mRNA kind of approach to developing va vaccines has been developed over the last 10 years and has okay. been, uh, you know, studied and uh, tested in humans and shown to be safe and effective uh, and, so this is not something that people just came up with and were able to develop a vaccine all of a sudden, uh, you know, out of the out of thin air, but has actually been informed by research that was conducted uh, in cancer research and also in HIV research. Okay. And a lot of times people ask the question, well, how can we have how could we have come up with a vaccine so quickly for COVID-19? But we couldn't have done that. We don't have a cure for HIV. We don't have a cure for cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of the, the, those health conditions operate very differently than mm -hmm. the COVID, vac COVID virus. Mm -hmm. um, HIV in particular replicates very quickly and mm -hmm. um, likes to stay in the body. It actually is comfortable living in the body, mm -hmm. uh, whereas the COVID virus is slower to replicate and, it, and, and slower to mutate okay. and doesn't like to live in the body for long. And gotcha. so it, it naturally tries to eject itself and find another host. So mm -hmm. those are some differences, some slight differences, but also that makes it easier for us to develop a vaccine for it. Whereas with HIV, it's been a little bit more difficult, yeah. but at, same, at the same time, we've been able to develop so many technologies that address HIV and cancer mm -hmm. that then have informed the development for this vaccine. So interesting. And so, so um, really cool just to see how, how, um, how quickly just the healthcare innovations and in science can, can uh, advance and, and, you know, what one group of scientists over here does can, can help the, the larger scientific community. It's pretty, mm -hmm. pretty interesting. Now, so um 
you know, as you've been out talking, talking with people and, and talking with different groups, um, you know, as you mentioned earlier, there, there are fears, you know, and people have um, different fears for different reasons, um, you know, and specifically with, with the population that you were discussing earlier with the Latinx and African-American community, you know, they might have, um, you know, a couple few different fears um, that maybe someone else does not have. So when you're talking with people and interacting with them, what do you say to address those concerns when it comes up? I would say that the side effects for, I, I first try to start by educating people about what the correct information is. So yeah. the side effects for the vaccine are pain at the injection site, fever, chills, and headache. And those go away after um, two days or so. Mm -hmm. And that usually you don't even really experience those symptoms until after the second dose. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, it's similar to the symptoms that you would receive or experience from any other vaccine like the flu vaccine. Uh, the reason why we're asking people to take the vaccine is because unlike the flu, a lot of people say, well, I, I know I don't get a flu vaccine. Why do I need to get a COVID vaccine? Unlike uh -huh. the flu, this one is replicating much more quickly. It's spreading much more quickly and people are dying much more quickly than with the flu. Uh -huh. And also the, the virus, you know, has implications for your brain functionality, your lung functionality. Uh, people are losing limbs, you know, so there's like other kind of issues that have way more, um, dire consequences for people's bodies than if you were to get the flu. So yeah. that's why we really, you know, the kind of the benefits of the vaccine far outweigh the dangers of getting COVID-19. The yeah. other thing we hear a lot of times is people concern about it, the vaccine changing their DNA or, um, you know, not being safe in some way, or that it, that they're actually injecting COVID nineteen into people, and those are not true. Mm -hmm. uh, the The vaccine um, is, in particular, the the mRNA vaccines are developed in a way that they actually were able to map the DNA sequence and the proteins from coronavirus, and then use that those proteins to be able to inject into a human being so that the person can recognize those proteins. It, it creates like a spike um, in, in the body and then the body is able to recognize that spike protein and then fight it off, create antibodies to fight it off. And then it disappears, it goes away, it doesn't stay in your body. And so that, you know, that's, I think the important kind of yeah. information for people to understand is not, you're not injecting COVID-19 into people. Yeah, I, that's a, <clears throat> probably a very good distinction that I'm glad you brought up so people can hear that. Talking more specifically within the African-American community and the Latinx community, you know, there's, there's some historical mistrust uh, built up there. And, and you know, I, I've been grateful to to sit in on some of, of the community partnership, the leadership council meetings and, and learn and be educated on, on some of the history and, and the background and, you know, why there might be additional questions or, or mistrust or eyebrows raised um, or hesitation, given that, that that legacy is there you know, what kind of conversations do you have with people or, or how do you kind of overcome that, that part of uh, the situation when, when you're talking about new developing science, such as, such as the COVID vaccine coming out? How do you kind yeah. of talk, talk about the past and then, you know, kind of marry that with the, the current and future scientific developments? I would say that this is, you know, not the same as the past in the sense that we have new, um, well, they not really new, the Institutional Review Board has been around for years, mm -hmm. decades. You know, I think part of the mistrust is because there's lack of consistency in messaging and there's different messages from different institutions. So people are a little confused about what's the correct information and who to trust, right? And so it is the, the onus is on us as research researchers and research institutions 
to be consistent in our messaging, to be consistent in our presence in the community and be genuine in the partnerships that we develop with organizations in the community. And so I think that's part of what we're doing to address that mistrust is, is to actually building, build sustainable partnerships with community-based organizations um, so that they are, they are at the table, that they have a voice in how things are being done here at the hospital. Um, and, and that also that we are in communication with the Department of Health and Human Services and kind of the D Dr. Goldie Bird is on the coronavirus task force for the, for the governor's office, mm -hmm. right? And so these are, these are relationships that, you know, everything that community members say and the council goes directly to state plans, right? Mm -hmm. It goes to directly to hospital plans. And, and the partnerships that we're developing with community-based organizations are ones that we want to be sustainable and not just coming in, getting what we need and leaving. But these are, these are opportunities for us to build relationship and to uh, create programs that are sustainable beyond just the, the duration of this pandemic. Yeah, yeah. So that's good information, Dr. Matthews. And, um, you know, I guess to, to kind of take a step back and, and maybe a little bit higher up in elevation, generally speaking, you know, after people listening to you talk about this and, and what the mission of the Maya Angelou Center is, and, um, you know, it sounds like the, the community voices are being heard and those messages are being you know, taken back to the, the, the powers that be and, and especially with this COVID vaccine, COVID-19 vaccine process. Um, so if someone listening wants to get more involved about, you know, how do they help? How can they, in their community, when they wanna help build trust um, between researchers like yourself and the community, you know, what, what would you say to them if they're listening right now? I would say there's a few ways that we are um, building initiatives to increase community involvement. Uh, one is that we actually have um, regular opportunities for volunteering. So they can email me um, or the My Angelo Center, um, M-A-C-H-E at wakehealth.edu and express interest in volunteering when we're doing outreach in the community. Um, the second way is that we're actually hosting a contest where we are looking for creative ideas. Uh, it's called the NC Bridge Builders Contest. Mm -hmm. We're looking for creative ideas from the community on how we build trust. What do they want to see in regards to building trust between researchers and the community? We're focusing on COVID vaccine, um, COVID vaccines, but you know, just in general, what, what are the things that we can do and if they have creative ideas or creative ideas for programming or mm -hmm. things that they're already doing that they want to pitch as, um, you know, as, as a part of the contest, they can submit that um, by going to www.ncbridgebuilders.org. Okay. And um, it's, you create, you know, you enter your email and are able to get access the link to uh, submit their idea to the contest. That's really interesting. I, I, that's a, uh, I think a really good approach to, to help bring people aboard and, and along on this journey. Um, so if, uh, you know, all you know about the vaccine, the COVID-19 vaccine specifically, Dr. Matthews, and, um, you know, what you've seen out there from, from the results from what people who have gotten a vaccine already, um, what they've reported back, would, would you, you would uh, or would not get that vaccine? Oh, I am ready. The only yeah. reason I haven't taken it yet was because I was away for the holidays. But yes, I, I have my appointment set up and I'm ready to get the vaccine for sure. Larry. And I've talked to family members uh, and friends and they are all ready to get the vaccine. <laughs> well, that, that was going to be my next, my next question was, you know, would you recommend it to your family? So. Um, yes, definitely. That's that's good feedback, and I think uh, kind of a good uh, litmus test for people listening. Um, 
I want to get people to uh, listen to get that the Bridge Builders URL one more time. It's ncbridgebuilders.org. Yes. Okay. Um, and I, um, the best, I forgot to mention, the best uh, ideas would uh, be eligible to receive a prize. So we have two hundred fifty dollars mm -hmm. for first place prize, one hundred fifty dollars for second place, and one hundred dollars for the third place prize. And we also have some, you know, 150 people would randomly be selected to receive $25 just for participating in the contest and completing our survey. Well, there you go. Yeah. So everyone listening, if, if you got a creative idea, why not submit it? You could get 250 bucks maybe. So <laughs> not much to lose there. So uh, Dr. Allison Matthews um, with the Maya Angelou Center for Health Equity, thank you so much for joining us today and, and talking about this important topic and um, helping us, you know, bring to light some of the questions and, and some of the possible solutions to these questions. It's been very helpful. Thank you. All right. Um, so everyone listening, uh, just once again, you can go to wakehealth.edu. You can search My Angelo Center um, there on the website, or you can just Google My Angelo Center for Health Equity, and it'll come right up. Um, so you can find out more information about um, their mission and, and their programs that they're working on right now. And and some of the opportunities to get involved. Um, and uh, once again, as we close, I wanna remind everyone of the wakehealth.edu slash COVID URL. Um, you can get the latest information that is being distributed there for the COVID-19 virus and the vaccine response as well. So everyone, uh, if you find you know, some of this informational or beneficial, please share it with a family member or a friend and uh, you can listen to some of the other best health podcast episodes that we have on our website or in uh, the podcast store where you download your podcast. So uh, I hope everyone is, is taking this seriously. Uh, my, my shameless disclaimer with all my COVID-19 podcasts, please continue the three W's, wear your mask, wash your hands, and wait at least six feet distance between people and and uh, as we rally together, we, we, can, uh, we can all fight COVID-19 together. So until we talk next time, everyone, please be well. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Best Health Podcast, brought to you by Wake Forest Baptist Health. For more wellness info, check out wakehealth.edu slash besthealth and follow us on social media. Wake Forest Baptist Health, care for life.